Let's start again. I light this candle and welcome in all the love that's in the room. And to make sacred this moment and lay it burn brightly for us. So we remember those we love who have recently passed and to offer them a boost of our love and gratitude and to give ourselves a balm of music, poetry, inspiration, cherished memories, and to light our ways in the days ahead. And I'd like to welcome each one of you here today to our Zoom gathering to remember and honor our departed loved ones. I'm Ben Martin. I'm a life cycle celebrant with a natural funeral. And I'm so grateful you chose to be here tonight. Since we weren't able to meet in person and are scattered across the front range, how about a virtual hug communicated in the American Sign Language by grabbing each shoulder, wrapping your arms around yourself, and then beaming your hug to everyone that you can see in your view. <laughs> so, I'm beaming you all hugs. So great to see all of you. So glad you all are among us. So welcome and warm hugs. Tonight we're about calling upon the muses to help us move toward a solstice of light and inspiration. We're in our darkest time of the year and as we honor the memory of those we love in this evening of light from our hearts, we are here to bathe in the beauty of music, of poetry, of inspirational thought. This evening is an invocation of presence as we make a safe place for our tender feelings and we call upon a fortifying wealth of light to rekindle our joy and our best memories. So with that, I'd like to ask Karen Van Vuren, a managing partner with The Natural Funeral, to offer a few introductory remarks. Thank you, Ben. It's uh, very special to be able to have our light from the hearts evening again. And to The Natural Funeral, ritual and ceremony, and certainly artistic expression, is really a bedrock of who we are and what we bring to the community. And in this evening of art, of music and spoken word, I'm sure you'll be touched at various moments and, and feelings will arise that recall your loved one and um, maybe bring a tear to the eye, but one thing I do know about nearly 20 years of working with natural death care is that in order to heal, we need to feel. And what we're creating tonight is a beautiful container for you to feel. And hopefully at the same time, also you will receive fortification and sustenance in order to to navigate uh, these darker months that are coming. And we're just hoping to shine a light on you and support your healing process. So we are so blessed by our beloved community partners and friends here to, to have this rich evening of expressions of love and creative music and poetry and Art. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna. I would like to then introduce uh, Jen Thompson to you. She's the CEO and co-founder of Trailwinds Hospice. Probably not a stranger to many of you. She's also a registered nurse. Trailwinds has been providing care to our adult and pediatric community since 2017. Continues their service mission to ensure no person or family goes without end of life care. So please help me welcome silently Jen Thompson. Thank you, Ben, and thank you, Karen. 
Um, it's such an honor and real privilege to be here amongst all of you. Um, I really want to personally thank the Natural Funeral for the special community partnership that they share with us. Um, our goals and our bond have always been such a clear unison um, and uh, an extension of really of what we call transition and hospice when the physical and spiritual body begin to walk together toward their final resting place um, within the universe of, of their beliefs. So thank you um, to the Natural Funeral for the sacred and beautiful work that you provide as well. Um, I just want to share a, a brief thought. I was asked the other day um, by uh, one of my employees in my experience as a nurse um, of 25 years, 16 of which were in the ICU and uh, the last nine have been in hospice. What I had experienced in my expression by the dying of a fulfilled life. And I pondered that for quite a few moments, considered my own experiences and immediately looked to the pandemic for the answer, which I felt truly illustrated what that fulfilled life piece is all about, in my opinion. Um, we are all united by birth and death in this world as the significant isolation that COVID-19 brought into our worlds. A fulfilled life came more into focus in my experience with patients and families. My own mother passed a week before Christmas last year and I recall the hardship of short visits to shortened visits to restricted visits to no visits in the hospital at all. Uh, and I recall driving in our own community here, seeing families outside of buildings, putting their hands on the glass to touch their loved one um, and uh, through signs and written messages and even the, through this very medium that we're now sitting and participating together um, through video. Um, so I answered the question um, really by realizing that the fulfilled life is that of one of the connection to others. Um, as we approach the end of our lives, the light begins to shine from a new place in our soul. And fulfillment in my experience occurs when that light has fully been shared through our humanness and our surrender, ultimately the dimming of our flame to being fully extinguished and now shining in those that we've left behind. Um, it's such an honor, uh, both as an organization and a human to sit with you and share that with each of you. So thank you for, for that, um, that humanness and that, uh, that surrender that brings us together and, and, um, unifies us. I'm full of gratitude. Beautiful, Jen. Thank you for that. Um, and blessings on you and on this very poignant anniversary time for you. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce Johanna Laura Mangus uh, to you. She's a multimedia artist, a musician, teacher, a Sufi guide, a caregiver, and a third generation Boulderite uh, and a beautiful, beautiful singer. So please help me welcome her silently. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Great. So I'd like to share a song. Um, this song was given to us by the 13 grandmothers. These are 13 Native American women elders, and they've offered this song to anyone and everyone. And the reason I chose this song is because uh, for two reasons. The first is that it's incredibly simple. And the second is it's incredibly sweet and can be very powerful. Um, it's said to be a Cherokee song. And like many Native American songs, it doesn't have words in the way that we normally think about words. This song really is about sound. The sounds themselves carry the meaning. And so it's up to us to translate that meaning through our hearts. So really more than hearing and listening to the song, it's about feeling the song. So I'd like to invite everyone to please sing with me. Um, and if you don't 
hear the, you know, the exact vocables that I'm using. Don't worry about it. Just sing ooh or ah or whatever feels good in your heart. And this song is about calling out to or drawing toward us the holy grandmothers of all time for support, for love, and for guidance. Humma, 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 hey, yeah. Humma, humma, hey, yeah. Humma hey ya ho hey ya Way hey hey ya Way hey 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 ya Ah ha Humma hey ya ho hey ya Humma humma Wonderful to have the blessing of the 13 grandmothers come through the blessing of your voice. It's beautiful. Thank you for that. Well, um, at this time, we want to do a time-honored tradition of lighting a candle in honor of the light of the loved one that we have on our minds and our hearts tonight. So if you do have a candle with you, I would um, invite you to join in with me 
and light your candle as we bring in this prayer, our blessing, I should say. May this light extend from our hearts, fortify us with a remembrance of the light of our loved one. How grateful we are for our all too brief excursion in this body, in this time we've had together, in this place we have shared, in this love we have come to know. We light a candle this day to nourish the soul's journey, to fortify the days ahead with a great wealth of love, to fortify our days here on earth with a love that does not die. This evening, we especially remember these that we name and place within our circle. Edward Alexander, Patricia Bruce, Carol Devonier, David Eifler, Ruth Laverne Weiser, Joyce Fowler, Lyman Fowler, Mark Galver, Larry Gordon, Brownie Harvey, Mary Beth Six Jackson, Deb Eifler K, Christopher Lee, Lee Miller, Mark Myers, Luca Negrini, Donna Mae Norris, Steve Peterson, Jots Ploughlin, Ben Ploughlin, James Burke Powers, Nancy Ship Peronka, May Rain. Marion Reed, Joseph Rorit, Josephine Rorit, Jim Seat, Mary Settegast, Warren Martin, Aidan Sheehan, Tim Starr, William Starr, Robin Sutherland, Flora Tenenbaum, Thea Tenenbaum, Roxy Vidal, 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 Benjamin Allen Getchell, Robert Getchell, Pamela Burrell, Beatrice McKinley, Norma McNeil, Edith Engelman, Charles Arthur Gregory, Carol Stark, and we silently name those we have not yet named but are here with us so present in our hearts. So I want us to I'll get into speaker view and there's a little button at the top of your screen and uh, if you find it, if you're lucky enough to find it and select gallery view, you should see all of us uh, in across your screen and I invite everyone that has a candle to uh, hold that candle up so we can see. And then um, I want to uh, uh, say that I have this um, uh, Tibetan bowl, and it's tuned to the letter, the note A, not the letter A, but the note A, which is the tolling uh, note that yeah, is tolled in, uh, by a bell in honor of a loved one who has recently passed. And so it has a beautiful sound. I hope it reverberates across the airwaves and you can hear it, but I'm going to strike it three times. And with that, I say let's offer gratitude and love to those uh, were, that are on our minds and hearts tonight. Fascinating thing about a star's light 
of course, we're 93% made up of stardust, is that it shines long after it has passed. In much the same way, the light of those we love continues on long after they have passed. And it's up to us to take the light, to honor and venerate their light as we are doing tonight. Blessings on each of you. So let's end our candlelight. Keep your candle burning, uh, but with a beautiful cello piece from Kathleen Starr. She's been playing and teaching cello for many years. She believes that music is a bridge between heaven and earth and can bring us joy, peace, and healing. Please help me silently welcome Kathleen. Um, this is a piece um, called Canción de Sueños, or Song of Dreams. Um, it's from a set of pieces um, called Sweet Hispaniola by Carol Rabinowitz.
So rich, the sounds. Thank you, Kathleen. Beautiful. Next, we have uh, Nicole Matarasso, who's going to bring us inspiration this evening. Nicole offers a sense of peace to adults, children, and families facing a time that often feels overwhelming and uncertain. She's a mid death midwife since 2016. Her initiation into the death and dying world came early in her life working in pediatrics as a child life specialist supporting children who were dying of AIDS and cancer. Nicole considers it an honor to be called to the sacred space of dying. She's deeply grateful for her most recent opportunity as a holistic funeral coordinator with The Natural Funeral. Please help me silently welcome Nicole. Thank you, Ben. During a time when the soul is called inward, it can be difficult to show up in community. So thank you for bringing your hearts here tonight in their truest form. All the feelings that grief beckons are welcome here. It feels right to say that your grief is unique. Not one expression is the same as another's. While holding our grief, we come together in community to honor and remember those that have gone before us, their life, their death, and the sacred space between. We acknowledge all the different ways that death arrives and hold space for the hearts here tonight who are remembering one or many that have crossed the great threshold between this world and the next. It feels important to recognize when facing a big loss by way of death, other losses or endings that may have lost their potency over time, find their way to the forefront of the heart in silent, unspoken, and often surprising ways. May the illumination of our collective heart lights be so bright tonight that we feel the warmth, kindness, and care that is with us. With deep gratitude, we are in the midst of creating a beautiful, safe, loving container, allowing our personal signature of grief in its many different forms and textures as it shifts and shapes. May it find a resting place here tonight, making room for the unknown, hidden feelings yet to arrive, allowing our hearts to be witnessed by each other in community while we remember and honor our dead. Perhaps we can be willing to make room for a little light to shine in on the dark parts we carry in our souls, shifting our grief as we sit in ceremony, expanding and opening our hearts with each breath as we remember and honor our loved ones. It was a year ago that I sat in this ceremony with an aching, bleeding, and broken heart after the death of six close family members in a very short time. I remember thinking that there wasn't a single remedy available to heal my heart, which was filled with so much sorrow, so deep I could barely breathe. I remember the intense emotion taking hold deep in my bones. Since then, things have shifted. Truth is, I'm still sad. I still miss them. And what is also true is that this ceremony was the elixir, the warmth that created a subtle shift in the tension that I carried in my heart and soul 
I was surprised when this grief turned me upside down. I found myself without a compass. I was scared it would remain there. Coming together in community with others who felt the heartbreak that death often brings made me feel less alone in my grief. I still wasn't sure that I'd ever feel the lightness of heart again. And all I wanted was to turn inward with all the mixed up feelings I carried. For me, the natural funeral offering this ceremony was the start to a long year of feeling my heart in baby steps. Only weeks after my dad's sudden death, this ceremony gave me permission to feel my grief unapologetically, to walk with my sorrow at a pace that was right for me. Even when the culture we live in wanted me to get over it and move on. I felt held by the grace of the circle. Another truth is I'll never get over it. And by turning to my grief, when she moves on in, I'm reminded that, I'm, that I simply get to honor another part of me that wants to be revealed. Giving space to deepen the healing in my heart and in my soul. Making room for growth and greater compassion for myself and others. By turning to the pain that grief offers up, the stuck parts of me begin to feel more fluid. In my work as a deaf midwife, one of the concerns that is often brought, brought to me by the dying person is that they're afraid they won't be remembered. This is what happens when we live in a culture that doesn't value tending to our grief and honoring our dead as they transition in their becoming of our beloved ancestors. And so tonight, we remember our dead by candlelight and in community. We attune to the sacred, which allows us to attune to our heart and our soul, and then to our beloved ancestors. By remembering them and honoring them in simple ritualistic ways, in elaborate ceremonial ways, in community or alone. We invite the heart connection we cultivated with our loved ones to continue, to come alive with meaning in a reverent way. In the coming weeks, notice the subtle signs of your loved ones being brought forth as a reminder that when the heart is connected, there is no separation. Be patient if you haven't experienced this yet and know our beloved ancestors tend to communicate in very subtle ways. As we honor and remember them, they will show up. I notice the ones I love who are no longer with me in physical form, most often in nature. While looking up at the night sky in awe of the great mystery, noticing the brilliance of the moon and the twinkle of a star. When I'm in nature thinking of a deceased loved one and the wind begins to blow on my skin in a subtle and different way than it just had. When the morning doves begin to sing while sitting on my deck or the rustling of the aspen tree just outside my window catches my attention. They speak to me in ordinary ways too, like suddenly smelling the sweet scent of my grandmother or my dear friend for no reason at all. Most recently, while driving to a client's home, I was thinking of my dad just for a moment. And when I turned my head, there was his name, James, across a brick wall in fancy, large writing. 
as I rounded the corner just before my client's street, I saw the street name, Baker, my dad's last name. Some say it's coincidence, but my heart knows that when I remember, honor, and acknowledge my dead, they let me know they are receiving my sentiment of remembering them. And so talk to your dead, honor your dead, call them by name, light a candle, make a place for them at the table, create a sweet altar in honor of them. Set their favorite flower by your, butt, by your bedside. Tell stories of them often. Let them know they will not be forgotten. My heart, even when it's sad, fills with delight as I continue to include them in my life. By turning towards our grief, not rushing it or shutting it out, we open the door for gratitude, love, and joy to enter our hearts once again. If you are suffering, gently hold what is present with compassion, patience, and care as the heart and soul of the matter finds its way to a lighter way of being. It's an extraordinary privilege to sit before you tonight. Thank you for holding my heart and opening yours, making visible the illumination of each and every heart being held in this container with grace as we continue on our divine paths of remembering our loved ones. Magnificent, Nicole. Thank you for your heart full message. I love how your ancestors are talking to you. That's beautiful. I'm glad there was a shift this time last year and may that be so for all of us here tonight. And uh, most appropriately to follow Nicole's inspirational words is another song from Jahanara. Wow, that was so beautiful, Nicole, thank you. Um, I'd like to sing a song that I wrote, um, which is inspired by the Hail Mary and by the universal mother of us all. I'm going to sing this song in Aramaic. Um, and may it bring peace to our hearts and um, the grace that the mother bestows upon all of us in each moment when we are able to receive. And I also just wanna take a moment here. I get, I get so excited and I get so nervous that I forget. I wanted to say uh, thank you to Karen and to Ben and whoever um, invited me to be part of this. This is such a delight and such an honor. So thank you.
wash For a treat tonight, we have Wayne Gilbert with us to read a special poem. He's a retired teacher and teacher of teachers. He's a poet and has published three books of poetry, one of which, From the Ashes, is a collection of poems written during the year following his mother's death. Through a project he calls Metaphor Medicine, Wayne facilitates poetry workshops for people with Parkinson's disease to help them shape and share new meanings for living well with a progressive degenerative disease. Please help me welcome silently Wayne. Good evening. Grief is not just about the sadness and sorrow we feel for a loved one who is gone or lost, as we say. It's also the way we learn to recognize and accept new ways our loved ones are still a presence in our lives. Let me tell you what I mean. I went for a walk with my mom yesterday I got onto the canal path, could not stop obsessing about how all my bosses were messing with me. I was so frustrated not to be able to silence my anger and disappointment, fever, pain. I finally called out to mom, just started talking aloud to her, telling her how lost I was again. When I paused, Thinking I had just momentarily run out of things to say, I became aware. I knew a responding presence. I was not talking out loud to myself. I was in a conversation. Oh, she was no corporeal, no holographic being. 
we were together in some alternative space, having slid from parallel universes into a cross lens, the way two light beams can overlap and mingle particle waves, make wave particles indistinguishably one without losing their otherness, identities, wave particles indistinguishably one. I did not hear her voice as much as I felt it. This is the way a stone deaf percussionist improvises with a jazz band. It's all about vibrations, vibrating other vibrations, intervibrating intra vibrations within amongst helixes of interwoven helixes, twisting vibrant strands, tangled spun from our little sun, a single wound, ferocious, excruciating slash from which the universe spewed a trembling, weeping, weeping scar sign on the black skin of primordial oneness, dancing with joy. It was like that, except it was just me and my mom. And I was walking along the canal and she was with me. We were having a conversation. I used words. She used something else for which I have no name. If someone saw me, they would have seen an old man walking a strong pace, uneven gait, talking out loud to himself, sometimes sobbing. Someone who saw me might have thought I was not taking my medication or uh, early onset dementia, or maybe just using a cell phone they couldn't see from that far away. But no one was on the canal path except me and my mom. Don't think I was out of my body. I was as fully in my body as I once was in hers, more fully in my body than I've ever been. This was not like a dream and hallucination. It was certainly nothing like pharmaceutical fantasies and chemical imbalances. <laughs> I've had plenty of those and I can testify with confidence from my own experience. My mom and I went for a walk yesterday, her death notwithstanding. We walked a while together. I don't know how or why. I don't believe in ghosts or spirits. I don't even know if I believe in life after death. I, this was not like cheap grace TV, Hollywood, pop culture, tearjerker fare. I'm not really religious. We walked together most of three miles talking. Me using words, my voice. She using her new ways of engaging with me. When she left, we said our goodbyes. I love you. I miss you. See you again soon. Then my body was wrapped by hers. She held me as completely tightly, as tenderly as she had when I was born. She called me son. She let me know she would come again, she can do that now. I felt her leave me the way sunshine fades from my body when clouds come between the light and the place on the canal path where I stood with grief dripping on my shoes. I treasure this walk we shared and I ponder it in my heart. Magnificent, Wayne, magnificent. You'd walk with your mom often if bring that to light. That's awesome, thank you. I bring tonight a, a cairn, a milestone marker from prehistoric times. Humans have stacked rocks to mark grave sites, but also to mark milestones. Maybe they're the same. I don't know. But uh, they mark uh, important places that are sacred. They're called cairns all over the world. Japanese have a tradition of uh, stacking and they think of them as a as a prayer and they either lead to a sacred place or mark a beautiful burial place. And um, to borrow from the Beatles, there's the 
the song that's a long and winding road after you lose a loved one. And there are worthy moments along the way that are important to mark with a milestone. For example, the 40th day or the 49th day after the death, the anniversary date of the death, the birthday, and many other significant days, maybe the day you walk with your mom, that are worth taking time to note to build a virtual or actual cairn of remembrance. So this cairn signals an important moment. It's here to mark this evening. It was an important moment to Nicole. We represented a shift. I hope we're as lucky tonight. And we've gathered here to find support as well as to honor and remember our loved ones. And as we move through the holidays, this time of year can render a lot of tender feelings. It can be a time when we feel the absence of our loved one most deeply. So let's bless this cairn in your mind. Allow yourself to mark this place, mark this evening, mark the bath of sound and voice and poetry. And may it serve as a salve to you. May you return to this milestone moment. May the light from this evening continue to nourish and fortify your spirit. This cairn is placed in a pottery um, base. It's filled with uh, earth at the bottom, surrounded in evergreen, symbol of that which is eternal, and of course, that's love. And so we want to invite in the four elements of earth and water, fire and wind. And so I bring this water to this moment in symbolic of bringing a blessing of cleansing and, and of uh, water <laughs> to our moment. And I bring and bathe our milestone moment in a little bit of fire, if it will, heat and bring fire. And then I bring this wind or this blessing tonight in honor of the body of earth that contains us, in honor of the tears that connect us, in honor of the transformative power inherent in the fire, and in honor of the breath that sustains the memory of our loved one in our thoughts, we bless this light from our hearts, Cairn. We have experienced firsthand how short our stay on earth is, but how everlasting our love truly is. We bless this moment with our love as we look back on the long and winding road, and we bless the moments ahead as we befriend our grief find ways to make our moments sacred and to allow these moments to bring us ever closer to those we love. May we be granted many more moments as we find our way through this great mystery of life and as we grapple with this great mystery of death. Blessings to you all. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, Seth Vidal, the managing partner at the Natural Funeral, who brings to us a poem uh, this evening. Thank you. Um, uh, this poem is called, Your Mind is the Garden. And I wrote this poem. Glance back because a head can't recognize why the weeds grow taller every year. But the grass too reaches soaring heights. All this rain and pain appears. Beware wandering off the path. Many of us have tried before. Pretty flowers can trip you up and set you down right on the floor. Tiny blades trip tired feet. You never thought you'd get that call. Are you sitting down to take the news? And can you handle one more fall? Blades don't feel the cuts they make. And grass and weeds don't bleed in red. Those kind of cuts don't leave a mark, but scars inside our hearts and heads. With barbed wire inside my throat, I have to warn you about the pain. Our weeds are getting so tall, Mom, 
but our flowers too with all this rain. I love that, Seth. So good. Thank you. Well, we're privileged to kind of close our evening with another beautiful song from Kathleen, a cello piece, uh, to bring in the beautiful and solace sounds of the cello, Saint Kathleen. Thanks, Seth. Um, so Ashokan Farewell um, sounds like it is an early 19th century fiddle tune, but it was actually written in 1982 by Jay Unger, and he wrote it in the style of a Scottish lament, a song of yearning. Perfect uh, ending song for us. I, maybe it sounds crude, but I feel like I've just got out of a massage. Everything is just humming inside. And so I'm so grateful to everyone who participated tonight. I'm so grateful for everyone who came to be a part of this and made it sacred. I invite you to get your candle uh, tonight and um, hope your heart was warmed with the remembrance and our celebration of the light that emits from the heart. And as we extinguish our lights, may you move the light from this sacred setting here in this Zoom room into a sacred space of your own heart. Keep your loved one alive by keeping the love alive. Blessings. May you continue to experience the blessing of your loved one's spirit. I hope your ancestors keep talking to you and you keep talking to them. 
And may you go in love and be with those around you. May they be a strength to you in the days ahead. Thank you again for joining us. It's been an honor. Blessings.